Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Robert aka The Logic Geek and today we're going to do a small deep dive into ML.NET. So ML.NET is the machine learning library framework, the machine learning framework from Microsoft. It allows you to use machine learning in your code and do it all from C Sharp. And they've also got a feature called AutoML. So let's check it out. So here we are. So this is ML.NET. It's an open source and cross-platform machine learning framework. You can use it with uh, C Sharp or F Sharp, and they've got a great feature called AutoML. And what AutoML does is it uh, you you feed data to to uh, the model builder, and then that thing entirely figures out which machine learning model or algorithm is best suited for your case. So for someone like me who has very little experience in uh, with machine learning, this is very handy. So what I've done is I've downloaded uh, this data set, the chest x-ray data set. Uh, you can download it from Kaggle. So it's uh, a set a collection of 5,863 images divided in two categories. So you've got either a, a normal chest x-ray or a pneumonia chest x-ray. And um, what we want to do is we want to use ML.net in combination with AutoML to see if we can make a piece of software, a model, where that, that you can feed a chest x-ray and then it tells you whether or not the patient has pneumonia. I think that's really cool. So let's let's try that out. So this is this is the data set. So if I go to the folder train, you've got two subfolders, one normal, one anomia. So you can just open this normal JPEG files. It's nothing special. Uh, I'm no expert on what I see here, but it, it looks like a chest. And if we go to anomia, yeah, I'm not seeing any difference to be honest. So. Let's see if our software is able to make some, well, chocolate out of this. And uh, we've got our train data sets and we've got our test and validation data set. So validation we can use. So these are images, I mean test, these are images that are not in the train data set. So with the test uh, folder, we can actually validate if our model actually works because those are images that weren't used for training this model. So let me just show you. So we're going to open Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. So we're going to create a console application. We can also create an ASP.NET Core web app if we want to expose this to an API or whatever. But what AutoML does is uh, generate a separate library and a separate uh, application. So it doesn't really matter. Go to next. We're gonna put this on the Logic Geek folder. On my Logic Geek drive code. Yeah, there we go. And we call this uh, sick or not. We're gonna use .NET 5. So, so this is a basic console, uh, console application with just our hello world in there. Now we're gonna right click on the project I'm going to say add, and then we're going to choose uh, machine learning. So, and then you've got several scenarios uh, that you can select. So these top four are supported currently with AutoML. And these are uh, links to walkthroughs on how you can do this from C Sharp. So here you've got text classification where you can classify text into two plus categories. So uh, for example, uh, you, you've got a lot of uh, comments and you wanna know is this spam or is this, isn't this spam? So you can create your own spam filter with that. Uh, value prediction, so, and the exa example is here, uh, price of a house based on features like size or location, or maybe predict the next uh, value of a stock, I don't know. Image classification is what we're gonna use here, so Classify images into two plus categories. For example, predict whether an image is of a dog or a cat or more. So in this case, we're going to see if it can predict 
whether it's a normal chest x-ray or a nonomia chest x-ray. And you've got the recommendation where based on an input, it gives back a list of suggested results. So we're gonna select image classification here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna run this local. I can also choose Azure instead of a workspace there, but I'm just gonna do local. Then I'm gonna select my data. So it's in my uh, logic geek drive data, just x-ray train. So you need to select a folder where each label, so each type is a separate subfolder containing the images. So I select here, and then it shows me the preview here. So here's an example folder structure. So it detects normal and anomia with some sample images uh, that it shows you. And then it's just a matter of clicking train. So start training. Now it says here GPU services not found falling back to CPU auto ML service. Um, I could use my GPU for this apparently and haven't figured out how yet uh, I should install us. You need a specific version of CUDA NN or something like that, but something I'm going to deep dive into uh, a little bit later for now. Uh, let's just uh, wait for this to finish. Uh, I'm going to speed this up uh, by quite a lot because this is going to take around three, maybe four hours uh, on this data set. And if you see the performance, here's my CPU usage. So I've got a, a 10, 900 K here and that's, that's a pretty good processor, but uh, yeah, it's going to be saturated all the way. All the cores are going to be at uh, almost 100% uh, usage uh, utilization uh, all the time. So we're going to leave this be and come back when it's finished. Hello and welcome back. So the processing has finished and uh, the auto ML, the model builder has created two extra um, uh, uh, projects. So we've got our console app with a piece of test code that allows us to use the model and to test it. So this is the prediction engine code that allows you to consume this model. Um, we're just gonna test it out. So here we go. Um, here we're gonna add an, uh, an image. So first I'm gonna do this because I just, I, I, it's not Java, it's C sharp. So use far or do this, but I oh know that's not possible of course, because this is uh, not a .NET 5 project, but a 3.1. So they used the uh, latest LTS version for uh, generating the projects, but um, this will work in a .NET 5 uh, project as well. So let's uh, select a file here. So I'm gonna go to uh, my test folder. I'm gonna select a normal file. So we're just gonna take this, this random file here. So uh, add that to the pads. Copy that and paste it here. So uh, let's make this our startup project and run this. So this should come back as normal. So uh, behind the code, this is a, a TensorFlow uh, code and it comes back as normal with a 82% confidence. So the first value is the confidence level and 82% is, is pretty. So let's take another one. Ninety two percent confident that this is normal. So on normal, that it's not entirely confident, but pretty confident. If we have however, select Nanomia, and then uh, let's select this one. And of course we need to select the correct folder as well. See, as you can see, it actually does take some resources to run this uh, on this code. So 
the server that will be running this needs to be quite powerful. And it comes back as Nanomia. Uh, let's select another one. So here it's again 99% confidence that it's Nanomia. So this code could actually be used to feed an X-ray and to give someone really quick feedback on whether or not this is a case of Nanomia or not. It's not always perfect as you see in this case. So let's test this one and again it comes back as an anomia with a 99% confidence so for example within a hospital you could use a piece of software like this to make a first educated guess based on software that it's whether or not this is a case of anomia or that it's just an something else and of course, if the, you can you can set a limit to the confidence level, and you say if it's ninety nine percent confident, then I'm just gonna take it as it is, and then this is a case of nanomia. If it's not ninety nine percent confident, then someone from radiology will have to take a look and inspect the X ray himself uh, in person. But yeah, this is it, and I think this is really cool because this way machine learning becomes accessible to. Well, people that don't have a lot of experience with, with machine learning, but do know how to program in C-sharp, because I can use this code and put this in a ASP.NET Core app and just make it a web interface or uh, use this console application to pick up a file automatically and put a value into uh, as soon as the X-ray is shot, there is an image and that, that image is automatically analyzed and then within the patient information system, automatically a label is attached like hey this is uh, this is a case of nanomia so that next to whatever the doctor uh, inspects uh, the computer will inspect it as well and i think this is really uh, a good step in uh, to to the future of of automatic uh, illness diagnosis diagnosis yeah automatic illness diagnosis would be nice if you don't need a doctor, you could just take an x-ray at home or something like that. Good, it's a really simple example. Um, I'm gonna try this out on different Kaggle data sets, see what, what we can do with this, but because there's a lot of a lot of data sets on here, and I believe that AutoML is really powerful in setting up simple, easy, accessible machine learning. Um, uh, algorithms that can be used in real life so this is it i think this is a really cool technology and it allows you to set up something really quickly with some really good results i can try out 10 different algorithms but i have almost no clue on how machine learning actually works i'm not an expert on that field and with, with this technology i can take the the guessing out of it i can just use the best practices that are out there and have an easy to use interface to create a machine learning model that can be used in real life. So I'm really curious to know on what kind of use cases you see with this kind of technology. For me personally, I'm going to use it within our uh, public website to see if we can build some kind of spam detection because we've got a, uh, you, we've got a new section and people can leave comments and they're automatically appearing on the website. Um, but I want to do some spam detection uh, before it appears on the website. And I think with this, with, with this framework, I can really build that from scratch. And I think that's really cool. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you.